All right, so in this next step, what we are going to do is take all of the parts that we saved in the previous video, all these here, and assemble them in the Watchmaker app. For the ease of video recording, I'm going to be using a Android emulator on the PC so that we can see everything together all on one screen. It's actually how I build most of my watches. It keeps things a little, little easier just to see it all in one place. Um, for this video, I am using the BlueStacks app player. So let's get started. You can see on the right side of the screen we have the watch, the or the, the face that we designed previously. Turn the guides off and get a view of the whole thing there. And then over here we will open the Watchmaker app and start building. I've done a test with all the parts just to make sure that the watch does work properly. You can get an idea from here that this is for the most part what we'll be creating. There's a few things that I can't do on the emulator such as weather and I can't check the gyro effect for shadows or shading or anything like that so we'll just build a basic watch to start with and then maybe we'll do an additional video to kind of show you how all of those effects can be added to existing watches as well. So what we're going to want to do, you can see in the Watchmaker app, the Home tab will have the Featured Watches and then the My Watches will have all of the watch faces that you have downloaded. What we're going to want to do is in the upper right hand corner there's the New Watch button and it's you get this nice blank canvas to start with. So we will start and design a watch. I prefer to name the watch right away just so that you can keep everything organized. If you can't tell that's kind of the uh, the way I do things. So we're going to name this the WMT or Watchmaker Tutorial 001. And then you can fill out the author information and web link and things of that nature. So in this case, obviously, I'm going to use my name. And I will link to my website. However, this watch face, while I probably will post it on my site, it will be hosted and found on watchaware.com. There will be some more information about that particular website in the links. The developer there is very active in the watchmaker community and keeps his site maintained on a daily basis. So I highly suggest everybody go there for additional watch parts and tutorials and things of that nature. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to add, we click the plus button, and then we are going to add an image. I mean, feel free to take a look at everything that this app has to offer. There are plenty of things you can do. There's actually really no need to use Photoshop at all. You can build spectacular faces without using any external graphics whatsoever, and there are plenty of designers that have done so. And I'll link to a few really nice examples of that and possibly even create another video with no external graphics being used. But for this, what we're going to be doing is building that watch face that you saw earlier with the graphics that we made in the previous video. So we want to, we had already clicked the add button and we are adding an image. And I have already downloaded all of the parts that we have here um, you can email them to yourself, you can use Dropbox, you can use Google Drive, you can use any number of things that you wish to get those to your phone for use. So the first image that we're going to use, I'll try to do this in, in order of the face just to keep it clean and organized, but the first image we're going to use is our background image. It doesn't really look like much because we just have one big white square square here um, but we'll get to that in a second 
So you'll notice then you have all these different properties that you can adjust and change to be whatever you need. Like if you needed to make that particular part of the image smaller or larger, you could scale it up or down. These numbers are linked by default. If you unlink them, then you can go in just one direction. We're going to want to keep them linked for the purpose of this tutorial. And we want it to stay right at 512 so that we have the entire canvas covered. And right here you can see the layer name. If you click on there, you can actually edit the name. So we're going to change that to background. Just that way we've got a easy reference to look at later. And now what we'll do here, and this is why we built everything in white. Because when you go to tint, now you can change the color of that to whatever you want. And I think for the purpose of this tutorial, rather than just choosing something random, I prefer this color right here. And all the colors that you see on the right side of the screen are actually from Google's material color palette. You can download it directly from Google. I will add a link in the description of the video so that anybody that's interested in getting access to their officially used colors uh, can have them. It's actually they work out perfectly for this type of use. So I'm going to use this this red here in the upper right and what I'm doing is I am just going to copy that code and then I am going to paste it right here. Now obviously if you can't copy and paste the code that's fine you can just type it out by hand and then you're getting the exact color that you want. But again you can you can do anything you want with it. And in the next part of this tutorial we're actually going to explore using script to allow that color to be changeable with just the tap actions that you've seen on some watches I'm sure. So now we'll move on to adding the next part of the background, which is that carbon fiber pattern that I was talking about in the first video, which is this here. And you see, because this is transparent, what's nice is then no matter what we do with this background color, it will just add a nice carbon fiber color to it. So we will name this carbon, just to keep it, keep it organized. Now we're going to add another image. And this time we're using that one weird shape that I was talking about. And what this is going to do is it's going to cut out the portion of the bezel. So you only see the carbon fiber right in the center here. And now we're going to need to make sure that the color of that is the same color of the background, which luckily is saved in the recently used colors right here for us. Oh, I guess it wasn't the right one. Well, there we go. Now it is. Alright, so now we have the basis for our watch. However, what we'll do here, I'll show you. We have these three here, these three layers. I'm going to choose the carbon layer and then come down to the opacity settings in this dialog for the carbon fiber pattern and I'm gonna lower that just a bit and you see you can really really adjust overall adjust how that's how that pattern is going to appear it's not quite as harsh just a nice little carbon fiber pattern right over the top alright so then we'll name this layer cutout again just keeping everything organized so now what we're going to do is we're going to add that the shadow of the bezel give us that sense of depth in our face which is this one here so you see already it's starting to look a little bit nicer we'll name that the bezel shadow and really we're just importing all these images one at a time this here it's really hard to see because it's all black in the the image that we're using is actually black, but what we're doing is we're going to be importing that little inner shadow that we have right there. You see, it makes a makes a huge difference when because when this 
if you were to move it behind there, you can see instantly just how much nicer it is to add that little bit of depth. So then we will name that Inner Shadow. Now what we're going to do is we will add the layer that has the marks that go around the outer bezel. Alright, now for the purpose of this, these marks would actually be underneath this shadow. And I'm glad I actually messed up in the order that I imported these so I can show you this here because I've seen this question asked a few times. And that is once you have these images down, how do you adjust their where, where they're located within the face? So what you're going to do is you're going to select the image that you want. For here, we're, we're going to be changing where the bezel marks location are. So you make sure that it's selected, and then you press and hold. And you see you'll get the X button to where you can actually delete that layer, or you can, once this is done, then you press and hold again, and you can drag that layer's location. You see right here is where we're going to want that layer, to where it's located underneath the shadow. And while we're at it, we'll just move this one as well. Now we can also, again, because we built everything in white, we can take this, we'll name it really quick, the bezel marks. We can take that and we can tint that to whatever color we want as well. Luckily, the way we're going to do this is we're only going to, we're just going to leave it white, so we don't need to change it to anything, but you see the advantage to using white is we can really edit this face to be whatever we want. Alright, so now you can already see here we've got what's shaping out to be a pretty nice looking face, just with a few layers and a little bit of time in Photoshop. So now we are going to begin adding the hands. And the hands are just as easy as everything else. It's just we're going to start getting into the codes that are required to make the hands rotate to the proper time. So we're going to start with the hour hands. And what we'll do is we've got the basic hour hand. And I have found the easiest way to do this is you just import one of each of the hands. So you've got your hour, your minute, and then your second hand. Okay, and we will name these hour, minute, and second. I'm not going to import the overlay images yet, and I'll explain that why right now. What we're going to do is we'll select our hour hand and then we need to come come down here to the rotation value for the hand and what we're gonna do is we're gonna click this the little arrow button down arrow button and then if you happen to know the codes you're more than welcome to type in whatever you want to save time but for the sake of this tutorial we're gonna use all these built-in ones that we have here now we know that what we need is a time code and we are on the hour hand and we need a rotational code so we're going to come down here, it's close to the bottom, let's see, rotation value for an hour hand that is a 12 hour hand adjusted for minutes. That is exactly what we need, which is the DRH code. And then you click done, and you see it's already adjusted the hand for the proper time. And now we are going to repeat that process on the minute hand. Going into the rotation area, the time, and now what we are looking for is the rotation value for minute hand adjusted for seconds, which is the DRM. And we will again do the same process, the rotation area for the second hand. The tag will be located in the time area. Now with seconds you actually have a couple of options. Well you will start with the first one which is just the DRS which gives you your classic ticking second hand as you can see here. However 
if you add a second S, which is also available in the tag area, you can see down here there is DRSS. What it does is it gives us this nice smoothly rotating second hand. So it's really all personal preference and what you want for the overall look of the watch. For the sake of keeping it all easy in this hand, we're going to leave it as a ticking second hand because we're trying to create a classic watch base here. So now we have our three hands. They don't look like much because we don't have our overlays done yet, but we're going to get to that right now. The reason I didn't import the overlay parts of the hands as an additional image is because what we're going to do is duplicate these hands because when you duplicate an image or when you duplicate a layer what happens is all the properties that are already attached to that layer meaning the the rotational codes the color codes anything that you have done in the dialog area down here will transfer with the copy so we won't have to retype in the rotational value just because we are duplicating that part of the hand so what we're going to do is press and hold on the desired layer for this case it's going to be the hour hand and then press and hold again and you see we get this duplicate layer option and we're going to select that now for this tutorial we're going to need three of each hand so we'll do it again for the hour hand and then we're going to do that same process we're pressing and holding and then press and hold again and then you're given the option to duplicate well, we'll do that until we have three of each layer. Alright, so now it seems a little excessive to have three of each layer of hand, but we will get to why in just a moment. What we're going to do first is we will take this, you want the, the layer that's on top. So you have three here, and the one that's on top you're going to choose the change image option and now because we know we're on the hour hand what's going to happen is we will use the overlay that we created which is what gives it that the, uh, the added depth for the hour and see there we go now we've already added some depth to that now the reason that I've built these layers separately is because now if we wanted to we could go to this hand piece and change the color without affecting the way the depth of that hand looks. All those shadows and highlights are going to stay exactly the same because they're not being tinted or colored anything either. They're just a transparent layer to add, to add that effect. We're going to leave them white for this tutorial though. So then we're going to do that same thing here. We want the top layer of the minute hands. We're going to change image and then we're going to select the overlay of the image hand. So there we go. And then again for the second hand, we're going to change the image and select the overlay. And there we go. Now we have a semi three dimensional look going on with those hands. And now we'll get to the reason why we've actually created three layers for each hand. We're going to, we'll start with the second hand because it's going to give us, it'll give us the easiest view. You want to take the bottom layer, and actually, you know what, what we'll do, we'll name this second S for shadow, and second O for overlay, just to keep it clean. So now what we're doing is we're selecting, we have the top layer, which is our overlay. We have the middle layer, which is where we would add all of our color. And actually, the second hand, we're going to want to be red. So let's change that. We'll go with a nice bright red. Maybe yellow. Yellow would look good. Nice bit of contrast on that face. There we go. We can just select whatever color we want. Let's go about there. That looks nice. Okay, so now what we're doing... The, the bottom layer of each hand, we're actually going to tint black. And then what we will do, here is normally where I would use the gyro effect button, and you can adjust this to varying degrees. However, I can't 
emulate what that would look like on the PC for you. So we'll, I mean, you can you can use the gyro effect, and then what will happen is as you move your wrist, it will automatically adjust the shadow accordingly. So it just gives it that another another sense of realism added to the watch, I suppose. But the way we're going to do this is we're going to use the position X and position Y areas to shift where that shadow is located. For the second hand, I think moving it to about, let's see, about four. You see the farther away you move it, the more it gives the hand the appearance of being higher up. However, with that one being so thin, you don't want it to be too exaggerated. So I think six will probably do the job just fine. And then we're actually going to bring the opacity down just a little bit because that stark black isn't really what it would look like. 70 is about right. You can see it casts a nice shadow, but it's still partially see-through. I mean, really, you can have it down as down as low as you want or you don't even have to use it if you really don't want to but I think a nice right around 60 looks great on this face and then we're going to repeat that process again for the bottom layer of the minute hand we will change the tent to black bring its opacity down to about 60 again and then shift it this one I'm not going to shift as far as I did the second hand because it's actually higher up so its shadow wouldn't be casted quite as far. So we're just going to stick with the five. That's And you see here it's added that nice little nice little shadow. And then again we will do the same thing on the hour hands lower layer. We will change that to black bring its opacity down to 60 and then shift it by we'll go just four degrees on the hour hand now right now you can't really see how much it has affected the hand because of its location but what we'll do is we'll name all of these really quick we've got hour s for shadow O for overlay, again S for shadow, and you can have these names be whatever you'd like, but this template will be downloadable, so just keep these names in mind when referring to it. Now one advantage we have in Watchmaker, if you are curious how this face will look at different times of the day, these buttons over here, this X10 button, will actually allow you to use the time machine function and speed up the the time so you can really get an idea of what this face is going to look like throughout different times of the day will make a big difference on this face here but on some faces it's going to be a very very handy tool so here you see we've got our basic face all done up these are all of the parts that we've built in Photoshop and now we are going to also use some of the included tools in the watchmaker app and for instance the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add some numbers to this face so again we want to add and this time rather than an image we are adding numbers and here is where things can get pretty fun because of all the different options we have the first thing we're going to do is we know that we need this number layer to be located underneath the hands. So we're going to press and hold, press and hold again, and then drag this to where we need. And we actually need it to be right here. That is the perfect area for it because then it's actually located under the shadow. And now you have all these different options on the text ring layer. The, one of the options we're going to need to do, obviously, the radius is a little too large. We need to bring that down a little. About right there looks good. However, with font and text size, everything could change. By default, it's going to load up with the Roboto font. And I think for this, I'm actually going to use Google's new font, which is the Product Sans. 
and I'd like to give it a little bit larger numbers a little bit of an exaggerated face, a little playful 42 feels about right okay so I'm changing the text size the radius and then again just like everything else you can tempt these to be whatever color you'd like this space we're going to build all red and white alright now here here is where you can really play around with the ring type right now you can see we have a numbered ring 1 through 12 but you can also change this if it was a 24 hour face or even here, if you wanted to use Roman numerals to build your face, you can do that as well. There are all kinds of options. You can build a date dial, a week dial, you know, anything you'd want to do. For this face, we just need a 1 through 12, which is what it'll load up with. And rather than actually displaying all 12 numbers, I would like it to display just these here. So I'm telling it to show every two. You can also move it to show every three every four, you know, you can adjust these options to whatever you wanted. But I like this here, and that's because I'm going to add additional information in what would normally be the three hour mark and the nine hour mark. See, and that was all built in the Watchmaker app. That's why we don't bother with those in Photoshop, because then we can really adjust that however we'd like. Oh. Let's see, one more thing here that's kind of nice is the text rotation. By default, it's going to keep all of the numbers upright. However, you can have it rotate the numbers, and you see there. However, that turns the 6 upside down. So what you can do is you can rotate inverse or rotate upright. And what that will do is it still gives the numbers a slight angle, but it keeps them all in an in easy-to-read area and I, I prefer the rotate upright and then let's say you were building a square face you can use the squareify option and it will actually begin to take those numbers to where they would be if the face was all square however we're just gonna build a round face for the sake of ease this time around we'll get into the other things in a later video and now we have our numbers and the way I'm going to do this, again, I am going to duplicate these numbers. And then I'm going to take the bottom set and tint them black. And shift them by just two degrees. And then bring that opacity down again. I'm not going to go quite to 60. I think 75 ought to do. You see, it's it doesn't add much it might not even be visible on the screen with the way I'm recording here but if I take it away and then bring it back it adds just a just a little bit of depth to the face alright so now what we're going to do is we are going to add the date in what would be the three o'clock mark so we are going to add text and by default it's just, it's going to make you say something so we'll just say date and now we're going to want this in the three o'clock position but I want the alignment to always be on the right hand side so the very first thing I'm going to do is change the alignment to the center right and then we will change our font again to the product sans and then I think we're gonna want a little bit smaller size we'll go down to oh, let's see we'll leave it at 36 see what that does and then the position X and Y we're going to bring this out to right around where the three o'clock mark would be located right there feels about right Unfortunately, the minute hand is in our way at this point, so we're just going to leave it on top of the hands until we have all the information in there. So the first thing we're going to do after we've got it positioned where we want is then we're going to have it. Then we're going to have to tell Watchmaker what we want it to say. Obviously, we don't just want it to say date. 
So we're going to click on the down part and then we've got all these wonderful built-in tags in the app. And we know that we want the date. I think what would look nice here is the month in three letters and then the day of the month. So we're choosing the month and year, the option here, and then the day in month. And I prefer it with a leading zero. So let's say it was the seventh, it would display zero seven rather than just seven. So we will click that. And we know we're gonna want a space right between them. So we'll get our cursor right between the two and then just hit the space button. And ta-da, that's it. A little hard to see, that second hand being right in the way, but we'll get it out of the way in just a, just a moment. Now we know that we're gonna need this to be located underneath the hands, so again, we press and hold, and then press again and drag that to the proper location, which will be underneath the hands. So technically it would be underneath your shadows as well. Just in case you decide to build a shadow that's large, you want to make sure that it's in the proper location. And now on this other side over here, let's see, what type of information do we want to display? What did I put in on the test one? We'll go back and see. Oh, you know what? I know what we'll do. Okay. We'll display a little, little digital timer as well in military time. So what we're going to do is I'm going to, again, remember I said when you duplicate a layer, all the properties of that layer go with it. So the font that you've selected, the text size you've selected. So what we're going to do is we're just going to duplicate the date layer. Press and hold, press and hold again, and duplicate layer. And then we're going to take this copy of the layer and we know that we're going to want it exactly on the opposite end. So again, we're at 196. So we want negative 196. Don't worry about how it looks right here. I'll explain in just a moment. It's because our alignment is off. Because we're going to need to change the alignment for this layer to be center left. And then just like that, it is exactly where we need. So again, we are going to use the arrow drop-down menu. And this time, I want the time. And I'm going to add military time. So I prefer an hour and day with leading zero of zero to 23. And then the minute in hour with leading zero, along with the colon added in between them. And there we go. So now our face has all of the little options that we were hoping it would. And now, for the most part, our face is actually completely done and built. I am going to add a brand to this face. So again, I will do another text layer. I'm going to get a little fancy here. We're going to want to change the font to the same, the same font and bring it down to 26 feels good. Bring the position up here a bit. And then again, we're going to need to move its location to underneath where all of the other text layers go. And then I'm going to duplicate this layer so that I can add a .com as well. Bring the size of that layer down. We're just adjusting the position of the layer here. And let's see if we're right. We're going to bring that over just a little bit more. All right, and there we go. That looks pretty good. We'll bring it up. 
And there we go. We have now branded our watch with the watchaware.com text. Okay, so now what we are going to do is we are going to add a ambient mode that will look nice on all the different faces. The problem with most faces is when you go into the ambient mode here, you see it doesn't really change the overall look of the face. Well, for the watch, the watches that have what's called a low bit ambient mode, it can only display 8-bit colors and it turns off the anti-aliasing as well so you really can't have anything too detailed especially things like this carbon fiber pattern or these bevels here that are designed to make the face look like it has a nice overall depth so those are really just gonna look gnarly when it goes into the dimmed mode on the low ambient watch faces so what we're going to do is we're going to use all the existing resources that we've made to create a separate layout for when you go into dim mode. There are a lot of different ways to do this, such as using code to change the colors and variables and what will and won't be viewable when the watch enters the dimmed mode. However, I'm going to show you what I believe is going to be the easiest to follow method, which is just duplicating the resources and adjusting them for the dimmed mode. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we are going to duplicate our background layer. And we are going to bring it in front of everything that we have already made. and then we are going to change that color to black and you'll notice right here you have the display option and you can have it displayed always or you can have it displayed only when it is bright or only when it is dim the never option I have no idea why it is there just just don't make the layer if you don't want to have it shown so the first thing so, so we're going to select the dimmed only option and you see right away it makes it to where now we can't see anything. So that's what this button here is for. It will shift between the dimmed and regular mode. So we are going to turn the dimmed mode on so that we see what's going on and we will change this to dim background. And now we also know that we are going to need an hour hand. So again, we are pressing and holding twice to duplicate the layer. And then we are going to press and hold, press and hold again. And we are going to drag this over here. And we're going to again, make sure that you have a display set to dimmed only or else we'd end up getting that layer on top of all of our other layers. We'll need to repeat that process for the minute hand as well. And again, making sure to change the display option to dimmed only. Now, in Watchmaker, it only updates, well, I think it's in all of Android Wear, actually, it only updates while dimmed once per minute. So there's really no point in having the second hand there. A lot of times people will use the second hand to display the battery level of the watch while it is dimmed. And we can, but we're not quite ready to do that yet because we don't want to have to get into all the different coding aspects. And plus we're just, we're just going to keep it pretty clean. Very, very simple dimmed mode here we know that we're also going to want at least the numbers to be displayed while dimmed as well so we will duplicate those as well again dragging those to the edge and changing changing their display option to dimmed only
And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change it so that when it is dimmed, you only see 12 and 6. Just keep that battery usage down a little by having the screen all black. And then I'm still, I still would like to be able to see the military time or the digital time displayed and dimmed as well. So I will duplicate that layer and then move it over as well. And then just always make sure that you are adjusting the display to dimmed only when you are working on your dimmed mode to make sure that none of those interact with your regular face. Now, let's see if we're lucky here, we can actually duplicate the hour layer and change it to black and then change its overall size as well. Bring it down. I mean, this is kind of a quick and dirty way of doing things, but if we bring it down like that. We can do the same thing on the hour hand, then what we're doing is we're just giving it a nice... We're trying to keep it as dark as possible to where there's really not a lot of color displayed, but we can still tell the time rather easily as well. Now ideally what you would do is you would actually create second hand, a second set of hands just for the dim mode in Photoshop, but we don't really need it. Those look pretty neat. pretty still pretty clean and there you have it now when we go back into bright mode none of those are in our way and then when the face goes dim it looks like this pretty basic pretty simple but it's completely editable and you are more than welcome to make any adjustments while in dimmed mode that you would like and there you have it that is our completed watchaware.com tutorial on using watchmaker